You are not healing is the exception. Give them a Good evening and welcome once again to Treasures of Our Faith. We're so happy to be interacting with you once again via this TV program. Father John Theodore, our spiritual guide, tells us that healing is a work of faith and therefore it is a work of prayer. We would all agree that each of us in some way needs healing, whether it be psychological, physiological, emotional, spiritual, our nation is in distress and we're crying out for help. Especially our youth are depressed and a sense of hopelessness pervades our land. Fractured relationships are causing us pain. But there is light. The hope of the nations, Jesus Christ. As Catholic Christians, it's our responsibility to ensure that the channels for sharing that light are clear and clean so we can carry that light throughout the world. My brother Keith Patrick will be sharing the scriptural verses with us as Father JT explores the topic, praying for healing. Father JT. It is important to know two things about praying for healing. The first thing we must know about healing is that Jesus wants to heal us. One day, someone said to Jesus, if you want to, you can heal me. Jesus says, of course I want to. Be healed. As long as you could look at your life and say, God cannot want this for me, then you are sure he wants to heal you. As long as you can look at yourself and say, if God loves me, he cannot want me like this. Then you know, you're sure he wants to heal you. Sometimes we pray for healing and Jesus does not heal us for his own reasons. Paul prayed for healing and Jesus told him, no, my grace is sufficient for you. Lourdes is a shrine of healing and Bernadette, who is the saint of Lourdes, was never healed. Sometimes God uses our suffering and leaves us in suffering to bring us out of our sin. In the story of the prodigal son, we are told it was during the famine that he came to his senses. When he saw death, it, it cleared his mind. I met a woman some years ago from St. James. She said to me, Father, 
I have cancer of the spine. She said, Father, this is the best thing ever happened to me. She said, Father, before I got my cancer, I was flying high, not taking on God. She said, but no, God put it flat on my back, and now I'm talking to him. <laughs> so sometimes God leaves us with suffering to bring us out of our sin. So sometimes God does not heal us, but we must know that this is the exception. What God wants to do most of the time is to heal us. When we look at the scriptures, we see that wherever Jesus passed, he healed people. Matthew 4, 20-25. And he went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every infirmity among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, demoniacs, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis, and Jerusalem and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. We will notice that the scriptures say that he healed them all. Nobody was ever left out. So this is the first thing we must know about healing. Jesus really wants to heal us. The second thing we must know about healing is that we need faith to get healed. Over and over again, Jesus told those he healed because of your faith. One day, a man brought his sick son to Jesus and told Jesus, heal him if you can. Jesus said, if I can, everything is possible to the person who has faith. It is not a question of the power of Jesus. What matters is whether we come to him with faith. Even when you are coming to pray for someone else, Jesus looks at your faith, the faith of the person who is making the request, the person who is praying. In St. Matthew's Gospel, there is a story of a pagan woman who showed great faith when praying for her daughter with an evil spirit. Jesus said to her, your faith is great. Go home. Your daughter is well. In the same gospel, we have the story of a Roman centurion pleading for healing from a servant of his. His faith was so great that Jesus says, I have not found that kind of faith even in Israel. Go home. Your servant is healed. Apparently, even when things go from bad to worse, we are expected to keep on having faith. A Jewish official came to Jesus seeking healing for his daughter. Jesus promised to come and heal the child. On his way, Jesus said, somebody touch me. The disciples said, Lord, everybody's touching you. Look at the crowd. Jesus insisted, somebody touched me. A woman came up and said, I have had a hemorrhage for many years and spent all my money on doctors, but I am still ill. I told myself, if only I could touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. I touched you, and I am healed. Jesus stood up, giving a big speech about the woman's faith. And all this time, he should be going to heal a child. So during his speech, someone came and told the Jewish official that there is no need to bother Jesus again because the child just died. Jesus told the father, you keep having faith. Jesus went to the house and brought the child back to life. Because of the father's faith, Jesus could heal the child. If we are saying that we do not have enough faith, that is good. One day a man said to Jesus, Lord, I have some faith. Give me some more. 
Even the apostles asked Jesus to increase their faith. If we are praying for healing and we do not think we have enough faith, it is okay to pray for more faith. It is good to pray for more faith because when we do not have faith, we are breaking the heart of Jesus. In the story, when the apostles were in a storm and were panicking, Jesus asked them, where is their faith? He is saying, do you really believe that I would let you drown? You can almost hear the pain in his voice. Jesus told Sister Faustina that our worrying hurts him more than our sin. Our sin says something about ourselves. It says, I am weak. I am stupid. Our worrying says something about God. It tells God, you are my father and you will not take care of me. That really hurts. This kind of thinking will hurt any father. And God is a father. Paul was a man who hated the name of Jesus and, and warded his choice of Christian church. Paul became a passionate lover of Jesus. What is happening here? The love and power of Jesus are stronger than the hatred and pickedness of Paul. We must remember this when we have people in our family who cannot take on Jesus. We keep having faith. Jesus could do a poll on them. We see them as a hopeless case. Jesus sees them as a new Paul. When I don't have faith, what am I saying? I am saying that my problem is bigger than God's power. At one time, Moses had a great big problem and was afraid to go to God. God said to him, he says, do you think that because your problem is bigger that my hand has got shorter? If I am fighting <clears throat> sin in my life and I have no faith, I am saying that my sin is stronger than God's power to heal. If I have financial problems and I have no faith, I am saying that my money problems are greater than the Lord's power to provide. We know the story of Peter attempting to walk on the sea. When he kept his eyes on Jesus, he walked on the water. When he looked at the waves, he began to sink. What was happening here? Peter was thinking that the waves were stronger than Jesus. We do the same thing when we believe that our child's rebellion is stronger than Jesus. When people brought their sick to Jesus, he never said, I will try to see what I can do with this one. I will see if I can do anything here. No, 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 no. Over and over again, the scriptures tell us Jesus Heal them all. Nobody was ever left out. The word for faith in the Old Testament is the word hemin, which comes from the word aman, which means to lean your life on the stronger one. We keep having faith in Jesus because he is the stronger one. When we see ugly things in ourselves, in our families and our church, we must know that the power of Jesus is greater than all these things. That is a position of faith. Now, the beautiful story in the Bible about a Syrian named Naaman who was healed of leprosy. Now in the scriptures, leprosy is a symbol of sin. What leprosy does to our skin Sin does to our soul. It makes it ugly. Some of us have sinful habits, sinful compulsions that we need to break. We need healing of these sinful ways. They are destructive to ourselves and those around us. 
An addict in a family, for instance, is a menace. The story of Naaman teaches us that for this kind of healing, we need humility. In the story, Naaman had to humble himself to do something that looked too simple. 2 Kings 5, 9 to 10. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. To get our healing, we must humble ourselves and face our powerlessness. We must admit that this thing is beyond us. People blame us for our behavior, but we know that we have tried and tried and failed and failed. It takes humility to admit that I am an intelligent person and I cannot break this sinful habit that is destroying me and those I love. It takes humility to say, Lord, do something here. I am powerless. We must never underestimate the healing power of the Eucharist. The woman in the scriptures touched merely the hem of his garment and was healed. We have an interesting piece of scripture in John's gospel. John 6, 54 to 56. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. Jesus is saying, whoever eats me becomes one with me. In that intimate wrapping up with Jesus, his power to heal us is released. The woman merely touched the hem of his garment, but we are in contact with his whole self in Holy Communion. The Mass is about healing. Say but the word, and I shall be healed. The Mass is a healing sacrament. The Eucharist is not just touching the hem of his garment, but direct personal contact with the healer. In the Eucharist, he can heal our spiritual wounds and infirmities, heal our physical, psychological, and spiritual illnesses. Health and wholeness is what God normally wants for us. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 to 25. May the God of peace himself sanctify you wholly and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Brethren, pray for us. In the Eucharist, <clears throat> Jesus makes himself available for healing. Not just the hem of his garment, his whole self. An important place for this is during Thanksgiving after Holy Communion. He's within us, the whole Jesus, not just the hem of his garment. During the Eucharist, the church prays for healing. Lord, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you give us yourself to heal us and bring us strength, Christ of mercy. The church prays, Lord, bring me health in mind and body. And of course, say by the word, and I shall be healed. For healing, we could use our imagination, use our mind. In our minds, we visualize Jesus hugging us up. And we hug him up. In everyday life, an embrace is normally a sign of communication in love. It's a love thing. Having the arms of Jesus around us helps us to feel loved by Jesus. We must rest 
our heads on his bosom and let his love flow through us and heal us. The next thing is to surrender ourselves, our problems, and all that needs healing to Jesus and his love right there on his bosom. We show a complete confidence in his love, expecting him to heal us. We must not hurry this. It must be a very gentle embrace which puts our heads on his bosom very gently with no great tension. We could remain in this loving embrace as long as we want, letting the love of Jesus heal us gradually. Resting our head on the heart of Jesus and accepting his love flowing to us, this can do wonders for our healing. Some of us may not have experienced much human love in our lives. By frequently seeing ourselves wrapped in the strong and warm embrace of Jesus, we will begin to feel more worthy and lovable. Resting in the embrace of Jesus and absorbing his love will gradually heal us of any lack of self-worth. When we tell people that they must, must not be afraid to keep on asking for healing, they do not always understand. God's love is different from human love. Even the best human love. God's love has the qualities of the best human love. The strength of a father's love. The tenderness of a mother's love. In human love, we feel that we must not ask too much or too often. If someone loves us plenty, we will feel free to ask them something big, like lending us $50,000. But in human love, we do not feel free to come back the next day and ask for the same thing. God's love is different from human love. God's love is infinite, which means we will get all his love every time we come. Infinite love. Hearing from us asking for healing every day is no problem with God. His love is infinite. His love is different from ours. Human love says, you again. God's love says, glad to see you. When we are discussing healing, we must remember that we have a nation to heal. In the scriptures, God has promised to heal the land. 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. So in the scriptures, God has promised to heal our land. There are many areas of our nation that need healing. Poverty, injustice, a kind of godlessness, no regard for life, all these murders, unbelief, the occult, there are people in the land dealing with dark powers. The scripture speaks of the people called by my name. So the responsibility for the healing of the nation falls to us who carry the name Christian. The people who call by my name. As Catholics, an important thing that brings healing to the nation is confession. In Medjugorje, Our Lady told us that if Catholics go to confession once a month, they will heal their lands. It's important to understand the reason for this. God's power could flow through us if we understand this. We need to understand these ground rules 
for healing. John 15, 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. If you abide in me. The scriptures tell us that sin brings a curse. Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 18. But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God, or be careful to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the field. Cursed shall be your basket and your kneading trough. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground, the increase of your cattle and the young of your flock. So sin brings a curse. When we come to confession, we take away the sin and the curse that comes with it. We heal our land by taking away the curse that could be upon it through our sin. Confession is a healing reality. If Catholics go to confession, in great numbers, they could really heal their land. God wants to do many things to heal our land, but his normal way of working is to send us. Exodus 3, 7 to 10. Then the Lord said, I have seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now, Behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. Scripture says, come, I will send you to Pharaoh. So God is affected by the pain of his people, what does God do? <clears throat> he sends one of us. He sends a man. He sends Moses. He sends one of us. When God describes a nation falling apart, his solution is to find one of us. Ezekiel 22, 30. And I sought for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand in the breach before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. So the nation is falling apart, and God's solution is to find one of us. I sought for a man who would stand in the breach. Standing in the breach means someone who will pray for the nation. We have to understand what this means. The ancient cities all had high walls around them. And when you come to attack a city, you would break down part of the wall. Standing in the breach meant those inside of the city, they come to that point to push out the enemy. So Jesus is saying that praying people are the ones who push away the enemy and save the nation. So the nation is falling apart and God is saying, I'm looking for someone to stand in the breach and push back the enemy from destroying the nation. So when God describes a nation falling apart, his solution is to find one of us. It is the praying people who will heal the nation. Healing is a work of faith and therefore it is a work of prayer. 
It is the people of faith who pray. As praying people, we share the grief of God over sin. We, we accept that we too have brought grief to God by our sin. Nehemiah says, I have sinned and my fathers have sinned. Standing in the gap means as praying people, we present the blood of Jesus to the Father for the sins of the land. In the same way, the priests in the Old Testament presented the blood of bullocks in making atonement for the sin of Israel. So we are in the business of rebuilding the nation. Isaiah 58, 12. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. So we are in the business of repairing a nation. On earth, Jesus had to pray to be given the nations. Psalm 2, 7 to 8. I will tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. All right. So we just, we just have to pray to be given the nations. In heaven today, he is in the business of praying for his people. Hebrews 7.25 Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. Jesus is saying to us that there is a healing job to be done for your nation that could only be done in your prayer. Not in your chat and your discussions, but in your prayer. Jesus is doing his praying for the nation through us. He's healing the nation through us. The praying people of the Lord are the agents for the healing of the nation. The scriptures tell us, now and for the future, my eyes are open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is offered in this place. Wounds that stand open and, and unclean do not heal the passage of time. Time alone does not bring healing. God needs praying people to bring healing to the nation. In the midst of all the tears and the frustration, the voices of praying people go up to the heart of God. Those without faith are trapped in fear and distrust. But the people of faith know the secret for the healing of the land. The scriptures call Jesus the hope of the nations. Why is Jesus the hope of the nations? All our problems come from sin and evil. And Jesus is the only one who could fix sin and evil. Nations. We ask, why would Jesus not come and just fix our land without our having to pray? The truth is that God respects our freedom. People ask me, why didn't God stop Adam and Eve from committing the first sin that put us in so much trouble? I said, yes, God could have stopped them by taking away their freedom, but that he will never do. God will never touch our freedom. Revelation 3.20 Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him, and he with me. He did not say, I will take a run and kick down the door. No, he says, I will knock and wait. If nobody asks him in, he can do nothing. Jesus went to his own hometown 
and could heal no one because nobody had faith. Matthew 13, 15 to 58. And when Jesus had finished these parables, he went away from there. And coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country and in his own house. And he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. The scriptures did not say that Jesus was tired or feeling lazy. No. He worked no miracle there because no one asked him. So God wants to be called in. Isaiah 65, 1. I was ready to be sought by those who did not ask for me. I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here am I, here am I, to a nation that did not call on my name. Could you imagine that? God said, I was ready. <laughs> I was ready for them, but nobody called me in. Faith means we call in God. God wants to be called in because he respects our freedom. He wouldn't barge in. No. We must say, Lord, we need you here and call him in. Jesus is the only one who could heal the nation, but somebody must call him in. Therefore, Praying people are crucial because they are the ones who call him in. When my old lady came to Fatima, she said, There are many people who are in hell because nobody prayed for them. Could you imagine that? Jesus had the power to save them. We are sure he wanted to save them. Somebody's prayer was missing. And they went to hell. Somebody's prayer was missing, and they went to hell. This is how crucial is the need for truly praying people. People's salvation could depend on it. The healing of a nation could depend on it. Praying people. Our nation is sick with crime. Crime comes from sin and evil. And only Jesus Christ could fix sin and evil. So only Jesus Christ could fix crime. All over the world, we have stories of praying people fixing crime because they called in Jesus. Los Angeles is a city of great crime. In 1984, the Olympics was in Los Angeles. Some Christians living in Los Angeles looked at the city. They said, we will have hundreds of visitors coming here, but the place is a mess with crime. And these Christians said, okay, we are going to pray for the city during the Olympics. So every single day, they prayed for Los Angeles. After the Olympics was finished, a man came to their leader. He said, I understand that you Christian people prayed for the city during the Olympics? They said, yes, yes, we prayed every day. He said, you don't know me, you know? He said, but I am the manager of the largest morgue in Los Angeles. And because of the crime of the city, every single day, I get 50 bodies for murder. For those two weeks when you prayed, I didn't get one body for murder. Praying people cleaned up Los Angeles. They cleaned up the city. Praying people cleaned up the city. It is praying people who will heal the nation. I remember seeing a video showing the reality of crime in the United States. I looked at a video 
And I said to myself, what this nation needs is an army of praying people. Nothing else. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> an army of praying people. We worry about our politics. But our prayer could make a difference in our politics. In 1995, there was elections for president in Guatemala. A man called Jorge Elias went up for the last elections and he lost. But he was a good man. Some Christians looked at the new men who were offering themselves for presidency and they weren't happy with them. Some of them were made into drugs, into violence. So the new guys offering themselves were not good men. So the Christians went to Jorge Elias and said, Mr. Elias, we would like you to go up again for presidency. He told them. He says, the last time I went up, I was such an unknown candidate that when they gave the list of candidates, they never even mentioned my name. They said, Mr. Elias, that's all right. We promise you, if you go up again this time, we will pray for you to win. He said to them, I think you are crazy people, but I will go up. And Jorge Elias went up for election to be president in Guatemala in 1995. On election day, he swept the election with 70% of the votes. That never happened in the history of the nation. We will pray for you to win, they told him. Praying people. <laughs> Praying people and their politics. In Brazil, there's a city called Joyania. There was a crime problem in the city. The governor knew there was a group of Christians who used to pray in the city. He called them one day. He says, we have this crime problem, but our weapons are no use in the battle. He said, we need your weapon, your prayer. And they got to pray and cleaned up the crime. And I like the governor's words. He says, our weapons are no use in the battle. What's the battle? The battle is against crime. But where does crime come from? Crime comes from sin and evil. So the battle is against sin and evil. What are the weapons of the governor? He has guns, he has police, he has army. Are those weapons any good against sin and evil? The, the governor is correct. He, he's, he's correct. He said, our weapons are no use in the battle. The battle is against sin and evil, and our weapons are no use in the battle. And he was a smart governor. He called in praying people. Their weapon is the answer. The FBI showed the power of praying people to deal with crime. In the United States, there's a, a state called Iowa, and there's a city there called Cedar Heights. It was a place of crime. Some Christians in Cedar Heights say we're going to pray for the city. They prayed for about 18 months. After that time, the FBI made an announcement. The FBI said, of all the cities in the United States with that population, Cedar Heights is the most best one, safest one for visitors. It has the least crime. The praying people cleaned up Cedar Heights. It is the praying people who will teach the nation that with the power of Jesus, nothing is impossible. Certainly not the healing of our nation. We have been speaking of healing of the nation. We must also think of the healing of our young people. Our young people live in a world that lies to them. When they're little children, they come to church with their parents. When they get older, they stop coming because the world tells them that God is not important and church is not important. The world shows them cartoons where witches are pleasant and beautiful. The world tells them that homosexuality is an alternative lifestyle that you can choose as you choose any other lifestyle. The scriptures tell us that the homosexual lifestyle brings you to hell. Jude 7. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities which likewise acted immorally and indulged in unnatural lust serve an as, as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. So the scriptures are very clear. <laughs> the world tells our young people 
very homosexual lifestyle is an alternative lifestyle. Alternative, you know, you could choose it. Choose some. The, the scripture tells us it brings you to hell. So, so the world lies to our young people. The world tells them that life is about personal success and doing well for myself. We know the truth is that life is a people thing and not a me alone thing. The world doesn't tell them that. Look out for number one. Look out for yourself. That's the world. The mind of the youth needs a healing from all these lies of the world. They need the truth of Jesus. Our last Pope, John Paul II, had a great impact upon young people because he offered them the truth of Jesus as the life-giving truth. He offered them hope in a world of darkness. He put them in a living relationship with Jesus as the one who will give them life. John Paul, up to, up to the end of his life, the young people were wanting to see him because he had a, a message for them of hope that Jesus is really the answer. The world was lying to them. He has told them where the truth is. The world of our young people is a world characterized by what is called secular humanism. What is this? This teaches us that all we have is this world. There's no question of spirit, no question of any other world, no question of right or wrong. In a document written on the laity, our last Pope John Paul II said that the Christian fabric is broken. Secular humanism is a great reason for this. The Christian world speaks of the reality of spirit, the reality of the other world, the reality of right and wrong. Secular humanism dismisses all these things. And this is the world where our young people live. There's a need for healing from these lies of the world, from the lies of secular humanism. Our young people could become soaked, soaked in this thinking, but we must know that they could be healed. The healing power of Jesus could cut through all these obstacles, cut through all these negative realities, and get to the heart of the, of the young people. Those working with young people must not forget the healing power of Jesus to get to young people. I remember a young man saying to me one day, he said, Father, what we need is not more wisdom, but more power. Here's a young person seeing that we do not need more knowledge, but we need more power to live in a new way. Father, what we need is not more wisdom, but more power. A young person. Young people could get the message. We must not underestimate the difference that Jesus could make to their lives. His healing power could save them from a world that is lying to them. May God bless you. Thank you, Father John Theodore. As usual, very dynamic touching right to the core of us, cutting to the heart of us and causing us to think and think again and act based on the knowledge you brought to us. Keith, you've read the word for us um, and, and from your experience interacting with young people, older people, I mean, you have your, your explosion coming up here and you've had testimonies. What, 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 what's uppermost in your mind after hearing Father JT? You know that we are really an unbelieving people. We are unbelieving Christians mm -hmm. because it's amazing how we try to justify not praying for healing. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we say, well, you know, it's all right. I, you know, God, it's a if God wanting to heal me, <laughs> yeah. but we don't, we don't go and stand in front of the drugstore and say, well, if the druggist wants heal, give me the tablets. We go and we ask for what we want in the drugstore to get healed. Yeah. 
why don't we have the mentality, Father, yes. that we go and approach God and say, God, I need your healing. Yes. What, what is it about us that, that we don't, we, we seem to have a block? No. It's hard to know. But I am sure God looks at us, God shakes his head when he sees us. Mm. As we saw in Isaiah, he said, I'm waiting to be called in. I'm a nation I want to help, but nobody calls me in. And it, it must be a real shock to him too, and a pain yeah. to him too, mm -hmm. that yeah. I have the power, I am willing, and nobody calls me in. Nobody calls me in, you know. And we talk about evangelization, and uh, you know the numbers are pairing on your screen, so you feel free to call us within the next 10 minutes or so and share your comments, ask your questions. We told us about the need for evangelization, and in this uh, version, this, this edition of Snow Implementation, it's about new evangelization. Sure. Those of us who were supposed to have heard the word already, right. but somehow we've fallen away, right. fallen off the side. Yeah, yeah. So would you say that that yeah, is what's that, right? I think that's part of it, because <laughs> some of us must have heard it at some point, but as time went on, we have not taken it up yes. as something real. And that's what the Pope says, we want a new evangelization. Yes. It isn't first evangelization. Yeah. First, we heard it already, but we have to bring it back to, to show it, it is real, yeah. real for now. Yes. And maybe that's, that's the problem you should say there, that, that faith thing that people, they, they have to see it again, yeah. hear yeah. it again, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that faith is what is needed. And, and as you pointed out there, the alternatives always seem so much more attractive. Yes. Alternative medicine, mm -hmm. um, new age, this, yes. and all of that. So that what really is the call, what is the pure right. thing, yes. we're well, not seeing that. We even need to be told that. Yes. Yes. The church must teach everyone more. Yes. We need more teaching in that sense, that's true. Uh, and, uh, go ahead. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> but you know, one of the things is that God loves for us to be in wonder and awe of him. Yes. That because then when we are in awe and wonder of God, we are acknowledging his greatness. Yes. Now, if you don't ask him to show his power, yes. then how could you believe he is so great? Yes. You know, it's like... Because I have power he, and I will give plenty of money and I could fix myself. Exactly. <laughs> that's right. right. Yeah, that's what we tend to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, you know, it's not just ordinary people that people would say who, who need the healing priests religious because us, there's yeah. this thing of, of compassion all fatigue of because you're us. ministering to others all so all much us. and perhaps because of the burden all that us. you find there you find yourself being tired perhaps yes. and you know just you speak, of, you speak of priests there's a priest who had cancer of the throat a woman said to him but father you are receiving the Eucharist every day. The blood of Jesus is passing through your throat every single day. Yes. Pray for healing. Yes. The blood of Jesus is going through your throat every single day. Yes. Why can't you pray for healing? Yes. Right? And who wants to live that? Yes. 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 So things in front of us, we don't see yes. it. All of us, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a, well, again, we're having our event this weekend, the Jesus Explosion. Mm -hmm. One of the facets of the explosion is that on Saturday evening, we have a healing session using the Blessed Sacrament. Mm -hmm. And last year, there was a Nigerian couple that were trying to have a baby, and she was having miscarriage after miscarriage, and she was going through, she was pregnant, mm -hmm. and she was going through the same process yes. of the pains yes. and knowing that things are not going right. And that evening last year, she was healed. Yeah. She knew, she left there and she said, I am healed. Yeah. And she never had the pains, anything. The child, the baby is born, the baby was baptized recently. And that is it. That is what makes you marvel at this yes. God. Yes. And that is what we've got to get back to, an excitement. Yes. Yes. Oh, this God, he could do yes. things. Surpasses man. the medicines yeah. and the yeah. IV. And yeah. The, yeah. I remember Father John T. came to our parish at Curep, was it last year or year yeah, before, yeah. and healing us with, with, with the sacrament. Yeah, the sacrament yes. You know, and you often, you often talk to us about the, the sunship of, of, of the sun, you know, yes. that warmth, that radiating. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. But um, if people could just understand that. A woman came to me, she, she said, Father, I'm from Missouri. Mm. Let me tell you a story about my parish. She said, our men went to war. She says, and our parish is silent. We go to pray a rosary every Sunday before our Sunday Mass for our men at all. Mm -hmm. She said, Father, call up, please. We have a caller. Good evening and welcome. Yes, good evening. Thank you. Um, Father Pedro, clarify something for me, please. 
e dire che il pendi cadi che sono di lì in scuola le, mi ha detto che um, il sacrament of penance or reconciliation is the sacrament of healing right. and the Eucharist is the one of nourishment could you just um, clarify that to me please yes, but, but in fact both of them are healing both of them are healing um, the sacrament of confession is a healing of your sins your sin story of your life. And as we saw in my talk, the Eucharist also is a sacrament of healing. Holy Communion, for instance, is a healing thing, for instance, you know. And, 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 the, and the Eucharist says, say but the word and my soul shall be healed. So both of them are sacraments of healing. Okay? Both of them are sacraments of healing. That's it. The, uh, just to add to that, the source of our sickness, Father, yeah. the source of all sickness is sin and sin, evil sin, right. and therefore when you go to the sacrament of reconciliation you're breaking so, the you're power healing, of sin and evil so and therefore you are disposed to, yeah, to be healed yeah. 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 yes. and, and you're making yeah, yeah. that connection you're reconnecting so important mm -hmm. and I, I really hope that our young people uh, have tuned in or that somebody will tell them you know, and, and when TCN repeats this program over the weekend, that that's at least one young person can hear this word and pass on the message, you know, that there's something yeah. awesome, something, something bright, something hopeful that's well, just waiting for you to reach out. I, I was telling you about this woman from Missouri. Mm -hmm. She says they decided to pray the rosary every Sunday before they, before they mass, for their men in, in mm -hmm. battle. They said, Father, our men went to the First World War, they went to the Second World War, they went to the Korean War, and went to the Vietnam ship. Father, not one man died. Oh, mm, praise God. God, yes. We have a caller. Praise, praise God. God. Good evening. In, in three minutes, I want to invite you to ask a question or make your comment, please. Welcome. Hello. Don't let me frighten you with the three minutes. We're just looking Hello? at our time. Hi. Hello? Yes, yes good evening. you. Yes. Yes. I just want to share this story. I had I suffered a bout of shingles. I think you need to turn I down your. Can you, you turn really down the volume on your TV, please? Quickly. 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 Yes. Ask her to turn. Yes. Turn on your TV. I had difficulty finding an ophthalmologist. Eventually, I found one. Eventually, I found one. Mm -hmm. And he told me, I told him, I said, you know, it's a miracle that I've found you this morning. Yes. He said, what miracle? The Holy Spirit didn't help you come here too late. But he treated me. And when he was ready to leave, he would have to go away. The eye was healed quite well. And he said to me, you know, you have experienced a miracle. I said, I told you that the first day I came here. He just laughed. So I went back home and I got a Holy Spirit prayer. I think he must have been a Muslim or Hindu. And I took it for him. And he took it. So your faith makes you whole. Because yeah. I could not get an ophthalmologist to attend to me. Yes. And that would have mean that I would have been blind in that eye. Very yes. good. Yes. Yes. Everything is Amen. possible to the person who has faith. Yes. Amen. Jesus told us Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yes, yeah, so these soldiers came back. Without a wound, yes, without yes. a cut, very alive. Four wars, not yes. one, a single one died. Marvelous, yes. Not one of them. So perhaps we need to keep these stories, yeah, yeah. these yeah. testimonies Paris before Paris our people. Paris should be pray for our men. Yes. So, so I feel that Christians must get serious more mm -hmm. about our praying and for serious things. Yes. You know? Get, get serious together. Yes. Get serious together. I would pray for some sisters for serious things. And when we were preparing our, our confirmation and first communion candidates yes. in this last session here, and we recognized that because many of the children were under attack, yes. visibly overtly under attack, and, and so we really got some members of the parish after Mars each weekend to kneel there before the sacrament and pray for these children. And I think we started seeing some peace. We uh, started oh. seeing children finding oh. their stability. Mm -hmm. No. If you get together, see, in Colombia, there's a city that, was, that had a terrible crime situation. Yes. And the Christians got together one weekend and prayed in a stadium. Yes. The announcement on the papers on the Monday was, they say every single day in this city, we have 20 murders. Over the weekend, we had not one single murder. Yes. They got together seriously right. yeah. together. Mm -hmm. right. Prayed seriously. Knocking mm -hmm. out Satan. Yes. He had a back track. Yes. You know. <laughs> I just want to add one, you know, just a, a suggestion for the young people mm -hmm. especially. 
Well, you know the young people there, it's either an email or a text. Mm. Yes. Listen, you send God a text, send Jesus an email, yes. and just tell him what your problem is and what you need to be healed of. Yes. Just put it in a text, put it in an email, and send it. And one of the newest things, yes, go ahead. Believe that it is going to happen, Believe and it. you'll see. Yes. You'll, you'll get testimonies, yes, yes. you'll get yes. stories. And one of the newest ways is, is viral marketing. So you send hey, that, and yes. it will just oh, yeah, replicate yeah. itself yeah, yeah, all yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Mm. Replicate itself all around, and then you know, we have a good virus, and we have some, <laughs> some light and some hope. Well, we're coming to the end of our program. We certainly thank you for sharing with us. We had a couple of questions and some comments. We thank Keys for reading the, the scriptures yes, for right. us, and of course, Father John T. for taking the word apart for us and, and cutting through to our hearts and our, and our heads mm. so that we could think again and come stronger with the help of Jesus. We thank the Living Water crew and all of those who are supporting us as we continue this program, Treasures of Our Faith. Until next time, bye.